Ashley with Cleveland Metro Parks Outdoor Recreation. I'm here at Brooksville Reservation on the Northeast Ohio Orienteering Club course. You might ask what that is. Come on in and let's take a look. There is a great way for you to practice your map and compass skills. It's a course that has 14 different points you can find circumnavigating Brecksville Reservation. So today we're going to look at how you might find some of those points. We won't use so much the map, map but we are going to talk about a compass. So come on in and let's get oriented to the compass. While this isn't a real compass, we'll look at some here in a minute that are some basic pieces to an orienteering compass or one that works really great on a map with this flat base is called a base plate. So this big rectangular piece is a base plate. And one really important feature on this base plate is the direction of travel arrow here. The next feature everybody loves to see first is this dial or housing or bezel. There's a lot of names for it, but the main thing is that it spins. So on this dial, you'll see that starting at north, there are 360 degrees incremented there. Also, we have an orienting arrow. So that's marked in red with little red arrows and it points to our north, you got it. Finally, our biggest piece on the compass is the magnetic needle. And while this one again is not real, it shows our magnetic needle in red and then the other side would show south. So let's look at how we might use a compass. I'm gonna find north. So I'm gonna spin my dial until north is lined up with my direction of travel. And then I'm gonna spin the compass so that that direction of travel is facing away from me. Generally, you'll hold the compass really flat because inside that dial is liquid and we don't want the arrow to get grounded out and misread. So you wanna hold it really flat, although I'm gonna hold it sideways so you all can see. And then I'm basically gonna slowly turn my body until that magnetic needle lines up into my orienting arrow. So once they are lined up and my norths are pointing north, then I can look at my compass and the direction of travel will tell me the direction of travel. So we're gonna follow our direction of travel. So if you all were wondering, north is that way. So let's see how that applies to our map. So come on over. If I wanna use this compass in the real world application of finding places on the map, I need to know how to get a bearing or a direction of travel off my map. So if you look, we are here at point eight. And I would like to go to point nine because I'm working my way around this course. So the first thing that we need to do to get a bearing off of the map is to use the long edge of the compass and connect my points. So in all of these steps, there's a check point that you need to ask yourself, did I do that? So on this one, when I'm connecting my starting point to my destination, I need to make sure that my direction of travel arrow is pointing towards my destination. So I'm starting at eight and I'm traveling to nine. So my direction of travel is pointing in the direction I need it to. So we have hit that checkpoint. My next step is to spin my dial or housing so that these lines running parallel to my orienting arrow called orienting lines line up with the north lines on my map as you can see they're drawn in here this map is really nice so it gives them to you so you don't have to do extra work but you can see i have extended it so if my line my orienting lines don't quite match up as they are here i can just scoot my compass along that connecting point line from eight to nine until they do line up. So my checkpoint for this one is to make sure that north on my dial is lined up with the north on my map. And if I have done that, I have done all the steps, I can pick my compass up 
and read it and it is just about 270 degrees or west. So now it is up to you all to continue the journey to find control marker number nine. Thank you for joining in. Don't forget to practice your skills.